Hello everyone, today we're looking at Ethernaut level 8, which is Vault. In this challenge, we have to unlock the Vault to pass the level. So let's take a look at the code. So we have a single contract which has two variables, a public boolean named locked and a private bytes32 password. In the constructor during deployment, a password is set by Ethernaut and locked is set to true and the password state variable is set to this password over here. We need to unlock the vault by calling the unlock function with the correct password, which will then set locked equals false. So let's get a new instance and see how we should approach this. Great, okay. So just looking at this, you know, it's pretty clear. So we somehow need to get the value of this variable. We somehow need to figure it out and then pass it to the unlock function. But this variable is marked private, which means if we try to look at the contract ABI, there is no sort of function that we can call or we cannot directly read the value of password, right? We can read the value of locked, for example, we can do contract.locked and it gives us true. Uh, we can call the unlock function, but if we try to do contract.password, it will fail because it is not a function because it is marked private. But that doesn't really make any sense because Ethereum is a public blockchain. So how do you have private stuff on a public blockchain where everything is supposed to be public, right? In fact, actually you cannot. And if you remember in the very first level of Ethernaut, we were supposed to do something similar where we had to find a password in the contract and pass it to the authenticate function. But in that level, the password was public and we could just call it. In this case, we cannot directly call it, but since everything is on, on the blockchain is supposed to be public information, there is a way we can actually read this, read this value. So a couple of videos ago, I explained how variables in contracts are stored in slots based on the order of declaration. But just as a quick refresher, so we have this vault contract, which has a couple of variables. It has the locked variable, and then the password variable. The way the EVM assigns them in storage internally is it places them into slots of 256 bits at a time. And each of these variables, you know, it's dependent on the order of declaration. So the locked Boolean variable, this ends up in slot number zero, and the password variable ends up in slot number one. Now there are ways where you can fit, for example, like two variables into a single slot if they're small enough. But in this case, both the Boolean and the bytes32 data types take up a full slot each. Um, however, for something like uint128, which only takes 128 bits, if you have two uint128s, they could both fit into a single slot uh, because a single slot is 256 bits and then half of the slot is used for the first variable and the second half is used for the second variable. But in this case, they both get their own slots and the password variable is private, but since it's a public blockchain at the end of the day, what we can do is we can directly read from the slot. We can directly read from the storage slot of this contract and Web3.js actually comes with a pretty handy function to do this. So what we can do is we'll do await web3.eth.getStorage at, and we'll first pass it the contract address, and then we'll pass it the storage slot we're looking for. So in this case, storage slot number one, and this will give us this hex string, right? And this is just encoded in hexadecimal. And if you look at the help table, they have a function. Um, oh, it's not over here. But Web3.js has a function called web3.utils.hex to ASCII, yeah, which will convert this hex string into its ASCII text representation. And this gives us the string, a very strong secret password smiley face, right? So this is the string that's stored in this variable. We were able to read it even though it had the private keyword. So all we really need to do now is we take this 
and we call await contract.unlock and we give it this password and oh uh, it it wants it in hex because it's a bytes 32 so we'll just wrap this we'll just give it the hex representation the original hex representation and call it and it will want to do a transaction hit confirm and now that the transaction has been confirmed uh, let's look at the locked value if we check out the locked variable now you'll see it returns false so the contract has been unlocked let's submit the instance and I'll explain what the private keyword actually does in a sec. Awesome, so we have successfully passed the level. So as, as this mentions over here, so it's important to remember that marking a variable as private only prevents other contracts from accessing it. However, they are still publicly accessible. The way to think about this is, you have to understand Solidity is designed kind of similar to an object-oriented programming language. So if you have any experience with other object-oriented languages in the past, something like Java or uh, C Sharp or something, uh, they have classes and classes have variables which can be you know, public, private, protected, and so on. And the goal for private variables in there is simply that you know, a different class cannot access that private variable. Similarly, in contracts, the marking a variable private, all it does is that other contracts cannot access it directly. However, the whole contract in itself is on Ethereum, which is a public blockchain, so they are still publicly accessible values. To ensure that data is actually private, it must be encrypted before being put on the blockchain, and the decryption key should never be sent on chain. So, you know, there are ways to do this with zero knowledge cryptography through ZK Snarks or by using like some sort of privacy chain, something like Aztec Network, uh, which is building like a privacy layer for Ethereum. But on the ETH main L1 network itself, nothing is truly private. So never store passwords, never store like information that is supposed to be secret in a contract because marking it private doesn't do anything about its accessibility. It's more so about the programming principles and the fact that other contracts can't access it directly, but it is visible to the public at the end of the day. Cool, so hope you learned something and I shall see you in the next level is going to be king. Cheers.